Ever thought about the hidden side of Hollywood? Behind all the glitter and fame lies some disturbing stories of addiction and recklessness. In this script, we delve into the lives of the 35 most notorious psychedelic drug abusers in Tinseltown's history. From devastating lows to heartbreaking endings, these tales will surely leave you speechless. So sit back and join us on this eye-opening journey through the shadowy corners of Tinseltown. Next, we reveal the first star whose psychedelic adventures led to troubled times. Stay tuned! Carrie Fisher's life was far from ordinary. Born on October 21, 1956, the daughter of famous singer Eddie Fisher and actress Debbie Reynolds, she was destined for a career in the spotlight. However, her journey was not without its challenges. Fisher was known to have experimented with drugs at a young age, with stories of her adventures with LSD and shrooms becoming legendary. Despite her struggles with bipolar disorder and addiction, she approached her experiences with hallucinogens with a sense of fun and adventure. Fisher's unique life included a significant career, marked by her groundbreaking role as Princess Leia in the Star Wars franchise. However, her mental health issues had a profound impact on her work. She was open about her struggles, using her platform to raise awareness and reduce the stigma surrounding mental health. Fisher's honesty and vulnerability resonated with fans, making her a beloved figure in Hollywood. She published several best-selling books, including Postcards from the Edge and Wishful Drinking, which chronicled her experiences with addiction and mental health. Despite her struggles, Fisher remained a force to be reckoned with, using her wit and humor to navigate the challenges she faced. She passed away in 2016, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire and captivate audiences today. Fisher's life was a testament to the power of resilience and the importance of seeking help when needed. Her story serves as a reminder that even in the face of adversity, we can find the strength to persevere and make a mark on the world. Her unique perspective and unforgettable contributions will continue to resonate with audiences for generations to come. Judy Garland's tragic struggle with addiction began at the tender age of 17, when she was introduced to barbiturates, amphetamines, and sleeping pills. This introduction came at the hands of her own mother and doctors at MGM Studio, who aimed to help Garland maintain a thin figure and high energy levels. Throughout her career, Garland's addiction continued to worsen her. She became reliant on these substances to cope with the demands of her busy schedule and the pressures of Hollywood. Despite her talent and success, Garland's addiction ultimately led to her downfall. On June 22, 1969, Judy Garland was found dead in her London home. The cause of death was a barbiturate overdose. Garland's tragic end serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of addiction and the pressures of fame. Despite the sadness surrounding her death, Garland's legacy lives on. She is remembered as a talented and beloved actress and singer who left an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. Her contributions to the industry continue to be celebrated and cherished by fans and colleagues alike. In the end, Judy Garland's life was marked by both triumph and tragedy. Her addiction, introduced at such a young age, ultimately led to her untimely death. But her talent and legacy continue to resonate with audiences today, serving as a testament to her enduring impact on the world of entertainment. Renowned actor James Coburn was known for his unique perspective on life and subtle self-parody in his acting. Long before LSD became popular, Coburn took part in a doctor's experiment with the drug. This experience may have contributed to his profound amusement and distinct outlook. Born in Laurel, Nebraska, on August 31, 1928, Coburn's family moved to Compton, California, when he was just four years old. His early years were spent exploring the outdoors, which sparked his interest in acting and storytelling. After serving in the Army during the Korean War, Coburn returned to the United States and began his acting career in the early 1960s. Coburn quickly made a name for himself as a talented and versatile actor. He appeared in numerous films, including The Magnificent Seven, Our Man Flint, and In Like Flint. In each role, Coburn brought a unique blend of humor and intensity, often poking fun at himself and his characters. Despite his success, Coburn remained humble and grounded. He was known for his profound amusement and unique perspective on life, often finding humor in unexpected places. His biographical dictionary notes that he had a profound amusement and a unique perspective on life, which often came across in his acting. Coburn's legacy continues to inspire and entertain audiences today. His contributions to the world of film and television are still celebrated, and his unique style and self-parody continue to resonate with fans around the world. 
whether through his early experiments with LSD or his unforgettable performances on the big screen, James Coburn left an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. In 1978, actor Gary Busey received an Academy Award nomination for his portrayal of rock musician Buddy Holly in The Buddy Holly Story. However, his personal life took a dark turn when he became entangled in substance abuse. By 1994, Busey had been struggling with addiction for many years. His close encounter with death came in December 1994 during a drug binge involving both cocaine and marijuana. This harrowing incident led to Buzzy's arrest the following year, bringing national attention to his ongoing battle with addiction. While incarcerated, he began to confront the severity of his condition and made efforts towards recovery. Following his release, Busey managed to stay clean for extended periods, but continued to grapple with erratic behavior attributed to past addictions. These experiences form part of the narrative presented in Busey's memoir, revealing the raw details of his fight against substance abuse and its consequences. Published in 1996, it offers insight into how one man navigates through fame, fortune, and self-destruction before eventually seeking redemption. Unfortunately, even after publishing his autobiography, the allure of danger never fully left him behind. Renowned actress Susan Sarandon has never shied away from expressing her views, even when it comes to controversial topics like drug use. In an interview with The Daily Beast, she openly discussed her experiences with psychedelics, particularly mushrooms. Growing up in the 1960s, a time of great social change and experimentation, Sarandon became friends with Timothy Leary, one of the most prominent advocates of psychedelics during that era. Leary's influence left an indelible mark on Sarandon, who developed a deep appreciation for the potential benefits of these substances. According to her, consuming psilocybin mushrooms outside allows her to connect more profoundly with nature and the universe. This connection helps her reframe perspectives, fostering personal growth and self-discovery. Throughout her career, Sarandon has been known for taking on diverse roles in both independent films and mainstream Hollywood productions. However, her fascination with psychedelics offers a unique glimpse into another side of her life one that seeks spiritual enlightenment through alternative means. Despite being in the public eye for decades, she remains unafraid to challenge societal norms and share her unconventional beliefs. Samuel L. Jackson's journey to stardom was marked by personal struggles and professional triumphs. His early years were marred by addiction, which nearly derailed his promising acting career. At home, he once passed out drunk in front of his family, revealing the depths of his struggle with alcohol. Behind the scenes, Jackson turned to various substances to cope with the pressures of fame and success. Yet despite his battles with addiction, he maintained a remarkable ability to function on set. This earned him a reputation as a functional addict, capable of delivering powerful performances even while battling his demons. Through sheer determination and talent, Jackson overcame his addiction and went on to become one of Hollywood's most respected actors. Today, he is celebrated for his iconic roles and unforgettable screen presence, leaving behind a legacy that continues to inspire and entertain audiences around the world. But it wasn't always easy. His road to success was filled with challenges and obstacles that tested his resilience and resolve. In the 1980s, actor Dennis Quaid found himself in the grip of a shocking daily cocaine habit, consuming a staggering two grams a day. This addiction had a profound impact on his life and career, leading him to seek help in the 1990s through rehab. Quaid has always been open about his struggles, sharing the details of his past and the effect it had on his present. Born on April 9, 1954, in Houston, Texas, Quaid came from a family of performers. His brother, Randy Quaid, is also an actor. Dennis Quaid started his career in the 1970s, appearing in various TV shows and films. However, it was in the 1980s that he became a household name, with starring roles in movies such as Breaking Away, The Right Stuff, and Inner Space. Despite his success, Quaid's addiction to cocaine began to take a toll on his life. He has spoken publicly about his habit, admitting that he would often show up to sets high and struggle to remember his lines. His addiction even affected his relationships, causing strain with those around him. In the 1990s, Quaid decided to seek help and checked himself into rehab. Through therapy and support, he was able to overcome his addiction and focus on his career and personal life. Since then, Quaid has continued to act in a variety of films, including The Parent Trap, Far From Heaven, and Trauma. Quaid's honesty about his past struggles has earned him respect from both fans and colleagues. He has become a role model for those struggling with addiction 
showing that it is possible to overcome and move forward. Through his openness and vulnerability, Quaid has demonstrated the importance of seeking help and prioritizing one's health and well-being. Dana Plato, best known for her role as Kimberly Drummond on the popular 80s sitcom Different Strokes, faced significant struggles throughout her life. After the show ended in 1986, Plato grappled with addiction and personal issues that would follow her for years to come. Plato was born on November 7, 1964, in Maywood, California. She began acting at a young age and landed her breakout role on Different Strokes when she was just 14 years old. Despite the success of the show, which ran for eight seasons, Plato's personal life was far from picture perfect. One of the most challenging moments in Plato's life came when her mother passed away in 1999. This loss deeply affected Plato, who had always been close to her mother. Shortly after her mother's death, Plato went through a difficult divorce, further exacerbating her emotional turmoil. It wasn't long before Plato turned to drugs and alcohol as a means of coping with her pain. Over time, her addiction became all-consuming, leading her down a dangerous path of criminal activity. In 1991, Plato attempted to rob a Las Vegas video store while under the influence of prescription medication. She served 30 days in jail for the crime, but it marked a turning point in her life. Despite efforts to get clean and turn her life around, Plato continued to struggle with addiction. On May 8, 2010, she was found dead in her mobile home in Oklahoma City. An autopsy revealed that Plato had died from a suicide by overdose at the age of 34. Although Plato's life was fraught with challenges, her contributions to the entertainment industry will never be forgotten. As fans remember her fondly for her iconic role on different strokes, they also acknowledge the difficulties she faced off-screen. Plato's story serves as a reminder of the devastating impact that addiction can have on even the most successful lives. In the 1950s, renowned actor Cary Grant made headlines not just for his performances, but also for his unconventional approach to mental health therapy. You may know him for his charismatic roles in films like North by Northwest and An Affair to Remember, but did you know that he attributed much of his personal and professional success to his experiences with LSD? Grant was no stranger to turbulent times. His childhood had been marked by poverty and instability, which led him to seek out psychiatric help later in life. When traditional therapies proved insufficient, he turned to a controversial method, LSD psychotherapy. Over the course of several years, Grant reportedly underwent more than 100 LSD sessions as part of his treatment. These sessions weren't easy. They often involved delving deep into painful memories and emotions. However, according to Grant himself, these intense journeys brought about profound changes in his perspective and understanding of himself. He even went so far as to declare that LSD had saved his life. Following his transformative experience with LSD, Grant experienced a resurgence in both his personal and professional spheres. His acting career reached new heights, earning him two Academy Award nominations during this period. Simultaneously, he enjoyed greater peace and stability in his personal relationships. Publicly too, Grant became an advocate for LSD therapy, sharing his positive experiences with others who might benefit from it. Despite facing backlash from some quarters, he remained steadfast in his belief in the power of this alternative form of therapy. To this day, Cary Grant stands as a testament to the potential benefits of exploring non-traditional paths towards mental health and self-discovery. While LSD usage remains contentious due to its legal status and potential risks, Grant's story reminds us that sometimes stepping outside conventional boundaries can lead to remarkable breakthroughs. Marilyn Monroe's life was cut tragically short when she died at the age of 36. The cause of her death has remained a source of much speculation and intrigue. According to official records, Monroe passed away due to an overdose of barbiturates and chloral hydrate. However, many people believe that there may have been foul play involved in her untimely demise. An autopsy conducted after Monroe's death revealed massive amounts of drugs in her system. This has led some to suggest that the authorities may have covered up evidence related to her death. Some even go so far as to allege that Monroe was murdered because of her connections to high-ranking officials and celebrities. Despite these claims, it is important to note that there is currently no concrete evidence to support them. Nonetheless, the circumstances surrounding Monroe's death continue to fascinate and confound fans and investigators alike. Throughout her career, Monroe captivated audiences with her stunning beauty and undeniable charm. She quickly rose to fame as one of Hollywood's most beloved stars. Known for her iconic performances in films like The Seven-Year Itch, 
and some like it hot. Despite facing numerous personal struggles throughout her life, including battles with addiction and mental health issues, Monroe continued to shine both on and off the screen. Her legacy continues to live on through her timeless movies, an unforgettable image. Even today, Monroe remains a cultural icon, inspiring generations of artists and admirers with her unique blend of sex appeal, vulnerability, and humor. Although her life ended too soon, her impact on the entertainment industry and popular culture will never be forgotten. Richard Pryor, a legendary comedian, struggled with drugs and alcohol for many years. His addiction to freebasing and cocaine was well known, leading to numerous legal and personal issues. In 1980, Pryor experienced a life-threatening accident when he suffered burns to 50% of his body in a freebasing explosion. Despite this, he continued to struggle with his addiction and was reported to have snorted cocaine daily. Pryor's addiction had a significant impact on his career and personal life. His erratic behavior and legal troubles often overshadowed his immense talent as a comedian. However, his impact on comedy is undeniable. Pryor's raw and honest approach to humor paved the way for future comedians and helped to break down barriers in the entertainment industry. Despite his struggles, Pryor continued to work in the entertainment industry, appearing in numerous films and television shows. He even won an Emmy Award for his groundbreaking comedy special, Richard Pryor Live on the Sunset Strip. However, his addiction remained a constant struggle and he underwent multiple stints in rehab throughout his career. Pryor's addiction also led to strained relationships with his family and friends. His wife at the time, Jennifer Lee Pryor, has spoken publicly about his addiction and the toll it took on their relationship. In her memoir, Tarnished Gold, she writes about Pryor's struggles with addiction and how it affected their marriage. Despite his personal struggles, Richard Pryor will always be remembered as a trailblazer in the world of comedy. His raw and honest approach to humor helped to break down barriers and pave the way for future generations of comedians. However, his addiction and the struggles that came with it serve as a reminder of the devastating impact that drugs and alcohol can have on an individual's life and career. Jack Nicholson's journey in Hollywood is intertwined with his experiences with drug use, particularly during the 1970s. One of his closest friends and fellow actors, Harry Dean Stanton, shared many of these experiences with him. Together, they explored the effects of various substances, including LSD, which Nicholson has credited with changing his life. Nicholson's experimentation with drugs was not a mere passing phase, but rather a significant influence on his career and personal life. His reputation as Hollywood's maniac was not entirely unfounded, as he was known for his wild and unpredictable behavior both on and off the set. LSD, in particular, had a profound impact on Nicholson. He has spoken publicly about the drug's ability to alter his perception of reality and open his mind to new possibilities. This shift in consciousness likely contributed to his willingness to take on challenging and unconventional roles, further solidifying his status as a Hollywood icon. Despite the potential risks and negative consequences associated with drug use, Nicholson has maintained a successful and enduring career in Hollywood. His contributions to the film industry are still celebrated today, and his impact can be seen in the work of countless other actors and filmmakers. Of course, Nicholson's experiences with drugs were not without their challenges. His personal life was often tumultuous, and his relationships with those around him were not always easy. However, he has remained a fixture in Hollywood for over five decades, and his reputation as a talented and unique actor remains intact. In the end, Jack Nicholson's legacy is one of both brilliance and complexity. His experiences with drug use, particularly LSD, played a significant role in shaping his career and personal life. While his behavior was not always conventional, his contributions to the film industry are undeniable. Whether you love him or hate him, there is no denying the impact that Jack Nicholson has had on Hollywood and the world of film. Renowned actress Jamie Lee Curtis has been open about her past struggles with substance abuse. For a decade, she battled addiction, which included using opiates. Her honesty about her experiences with addiction serves as a reminder of its dangerous grip. Curtis comes from a family deeply entrenched in Hollywood royalty. As the daughter of legendary actors Tony Curtis and Janet Leigh, she was exposed to the glitz and glamour of show business early on. Despite this privileged upbringing, she faced significant personal challenges related to addiction. Tragically, Curtis experienced the devastating consequences of addiction when her older brother Nicholas died from a heroin overdose. 
This heartbreaking event made her acutely aware of the insidious nature of drug dependency and sparked a desire to break free from her own addictive behaviors. Since then, Curtis has become a powerful advocate for addiction awareness and recovery. By sharing her story, she hopes to inspire others facing similar battles and reduce stigma surrounding addiction. Through her courageous vulnerability, she demonstrates resilience and determination while reminding us all of the importance of seeking help when needed. Dennis Hopper's tumultuous relationship with drugs is no secret in Hollywood. The actor, often referred to as the industry's original hair raiser, had a long history of substance abuse that significantly impacted both his career and personal life. Born on May 17, 1936, in Dodge City, Kansas, Hopper's fascination with drugs began at a young age. He first experimented with marijuana as a teenager and later moved on to more potent substances like LSD and cocaine. Hopper's drug use became a defining characteristic of his personality, often leading to wild and unpredictable behavior. One of Hopper's most infamous adventures took place during the filming of the last movie in 1971. The actor, who was also the director of the film, became increasingly erratic and paranoid due to his heavy drug use. At one point, he buried the film's negative in the ground, believing that it was the only way to protect it from being stolen. The film's production was plagued by delays and budget overruns, and it ultimately flopped at the box office. Hopper's drug use also led to several run-ins with the law. In 1975, he was arrested for possession of cocaine and was placed on probation. However, he continued to use drugs, and in 1983, he was arrested again for driving under the influence of alcohol and cocaine. The actor spent several days in jail and was ordered to undergo rehabilitation. Despite his struggles with substance abuse, Hopper managed to maintain a successful acting career. He appeared in numerous films, including Easy Rider, Apocalypse Now, and Blue Velvet. His performances were often marked by his intensity and unpredictability, which many attributed to his drug use. Hopper's personal life was also significantly impacted by his substance abuse. He was married five times and had four children. However, his relationships were often tumultuous, and he was known to have a volatile temper. Hopper's drug use also took a toll on his health, and he was diagnosed with prostate cancer in 2002. Despite his struggles, Hopper remained a prominent figure in Hollywood until his death in 2010. His legacy as an actor and director continues to inspire and influence filmmakers to this day. However, his story also serves as a cautionary tale about the dangers of substance abuse and the toll it can take on an individual's life and career. While many know Frances McDormand for her powerful performances on screen, her experiences with LSD have been less publicized yet equally profound. In interviews, the actress has opened up about how the drug played a significant role in shaping her perspectives and personal growth. McDormand was born on June 23, 1957, in Chicago, Illinois. She grew up in a family deeply rooted in faith and attended Bethany College in West Virginia before transferring to Yale University School of Drama. After graduation, she pursued acting full-time and quickly made a name for herself in Hollywood. Despite her successful career, McDormand remained grounded and continued to explore different aspects of her personality. One way she did so was through experimenting with psychedelics like LSD. According to the actress, these experiences helped her gain a deeper understanding of herself and the world around her. Although some may view McDormand's drug use negatively, it's essential to understand that she approached it thoughtfully and respectfully. For instance, she emphasizes the importance of set and setting when discussing her LSD usage. This mindfulness highlights her responsible approach towards exploring altered states of consciousness. Moreover, McDormand advocates for the legalization of drugs like LSD, arguing that criminalizing them does more harm than good. By speaking out about her own positive experiences, she challenges societal stigmas surrounding drug use and encourages honest conversations about their potential benefits. Ultimately, while much of Frances McDormand's life remains private, her candidness regarding her past LSD use offers valuable insights into her character. Her willingness to embrace vulnerability demonstrates her commitment to authenticity, both on and off screen. The life of Bruce Lee, the legendary martial artist and actor, may not have been as straightforward as many believe. New information has come to light that suggests a secret life involving drug use during the 1970s. Bruce Lee, born on November 27, 1940, in San Francisco, California, was known for his incredible physical prowess and his groundbreaking contributions to martial arts and cinema. 
However, letters from his friend Robert Baker hint at a different side of the martial arts legend. In the letters, Baker writes about Lee's alleged use of cocaine during the 1970s. This revelation may come as a surprise to many fans of Lee, who have long admired him for his discipline and dedication to his craft. Despite these allegations, it is important to remember that Lee's impact on martial arts and cinema is undeniable. He starred in several successful films, including Enter the Dragon, which was released just a month before his death in 1973. Lee's death has been the subject of much speculation over the years. It was initially reported that he died from a brain edema, but recent reports suggest that a prescription painkiller may have played a role in his coma and subsequent death. The news of Bruce Lee's alleged drug use and the circumstances surrounding his death may change some people's perceptions of the martial arts legend. However, his contributions to martial arts and cinema will continue to inspire and captivate audiences for generations to come. Alan Ladd, best known for his role in The Great Gatsby, tragically passed away in 1964 due to a lethal combination of alcohol, barbiturates, and tranquilizers. This unfortunate event shed light on the actor's ongoing battle with insomnia and dependency on sleeping pills. Born on September 3, 1913, in Hot Springs, Arkansas, Ladd moved frequently during his childhood due to his father's work as a traveling salesman. Eventually settling in California, he discovered his passion for acting after trying his hand at various jobs, including working as a janitor and an accountant. Ladd's career took off in the late 1930s when he started appearing in small film roles. However, it wasn't until the early 1940s that he gained widespread recognition for his performance alongside Loretta Young in The Looniest Girl in Texas. Standing at just 5 feet 6 inches tall, Ladd often played characters who were physically imposing, creating an intriguing contrast between his stature and his on-screen presence. Throughout the 1940s and 1950s, Ladd continued to build his reputation as a talented actor, starring in numerous films such as This Gun for Hire and Shane. Despite his success, personal struggles plagued him, leading to his reliance on prescription drugs to cope with sleep disorders. On January 29, 1964, Ladd's lifeless body was found in his bedroom, surrounded by pill bottles containing sedatives. An autopsy report revealed that his death resulted from a fatal cocktail of alcohol and medication. Investigators concluded that his passing was accidental, but highlighted his chronic insomnia and addiction to sleeping pills. Alan Ladd's life ended abruptly, leaving behind a legacy marked by both triumphs and tribulations. Though his career showcased versatility and talent, his untimely demise served as a stark reminder of the devastating consequences of substance abuse and mental health issues. In the 1980s, Elizabeth Taylor's story of addiction became a cause for concern. Consuming an alarming amount of pills, she appeared lifeless to a medical expert. From 1983 to 1988, she obtained 1,000 prescriptions for 28 different drugs, shedding light on her severe dependency. Her battle with addiction was a significant chapter in her life. George Sanders, the renowned actor known for his role in The Jungle Book, left behind a chilling farewell to Hollywood. At the age of 65, Sanders took his own life, swallowing five bottles of Nembutal. The news of his death sent shockwaves through the industry, and his suicide note remains one of the most haunting in Hollywood history. Born on July 3, 1906, in St. Petersburg, Russia, Sanders was no stranger to the spotlight. He began his acting career in the 1930s, quickly becoming a familiar face in both film and television. Over the years, he appeared in numerous productions, including Rebecca, The Picture of Dorian Gray, and All About Eve. Sanders' talent for acting was undeniable. He had a distinctive voice and a commanding presence that made him a standout in any production. His ability to play a wide range of characters, from suave leading men to menacing villains, cemented his status as a Hollywood legend. Despite his success, Sanders was plagued by personal demons. He struggled with depression and substance abuse, which ultimately led to his tragic death. In his suicide note, Sanders wrote, Dear world, I am leaving because I am bored. I feel I have lived long enough. I am leaving you with your worries in this sweet cesspool. Good luck. Sanders' legacy lives on through his work which continues to captivate audiences to this day. His chilling farewell serves as a reminder of the struggles that many in the entertainment industry face, even in the midst of success and acclaim. Joan Rivers, a legendary figure in the world of comedy, passed away due to complications from a routine throat surgery. The tragic incident highlighted the dangers of prescription drugs, as the sedative propofol was found to be the cause of her death. 
This is the same drug that claimed the life of the king of pop, Michael Jackson. Rivers was born on June 8, 1933, in Brooklyn, New York. She began her career in the 1960s and quickly made a name for herself as a sharp-tongued comedian. Known for her biting wit and unapologetic humor, Rivers became a fixture on the comedy circuit and a regular guest on talk shows. In the 1980s, Rivers landed her own talk show, The Joan Rivers Show, which earned her a Daytime Emmy Award for Outstanding Talk Show Host. She also became a red carpet staple, known for her cutting commentary and interviews with celebrities at events like the Academy Awards. Despite her success, Rivers' career was not without controversy. She faced backlash for her jokes about celebrities and political figures, and her outspoken personality often put her at odds with the entertainment industry. However, she remained a beloved figure among her fans and a trailblazer for women in comedy. Rivers' death brought attention to the dangers of prescription drugs, particularly propofol. The drug, which is commonly used for anesthesia during medical procedures, has been linked to several high-profile deaths, including that of Michael Jackson. In Rivers' case, an overdose during a routine throat surgery proved to be fatal. The loss of Joan Rivers was a blow to the comedy world and to her many fans. Her legacy lives on through her groundbreaking career and her contributions to the world of entertainment. Her death serves as a reminder of the dangers of prescription drugs and the importance of proper medical care. John Belushi's life was marked by a meteoric rise to fame and a tragic end. Born on January 24, 1949, in Chicago, Illinois, Belushi was known for his wild lifestyle and drug use, which ultimately led to his untimely death at the age of 33. Belushi began his comedy career in the early 1970s as a member of Chicago's Second City Comedy Troupe. He later joined the cast of the hit television show Saturday Night Live in 1975, where he quickly became a fan favorite with his hilarious sketches and impersonations. However, Belushi's success was accompanied by a growing addiction to drugs, particularly cocaine. His wild lifestyle and drug use were well documented, and he was known for his intense partying and excessive drug use. On March 5, 1982, Belushi's drug use caught up with him when he died from a speedball overdose, a combination of cocaine and heroin. His death was a shock to the entertainment industry and served as a cautionary tale of the dangers of addiction. Despite his tragic end, Belushi's legacy lives on. He was posthumously awarded a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame in 2004, and his impact on the world of comedy is still felt today. His performances in films such as Animal House, and the Blues Brothers continue to entertain audiences and showcase his comedic genius. Belushi's life and career serve as a reminder of the dangers of addiction and the toll it can take on even the most successful and talented individual. His legacy is not only one of comedic brilliance, but also a cautionary tale of the perils of drug